Hey, what's up guys? I am back down in Florida. I'm at my friend Charlie's place. Charlie has a awesome collection of all kinds of exotic wildlife, including turtles and tortoises. Uh, I've been meaning to make it down here and check out his place for a long time now. Finally made it here, and I can't wait to show you guys what he's got. Hey guys, welcome to Wellington. Come on in and check it out. Awesome. These are really, really cool. They're wild, they're not uh, domesticated at all. They're from South America. Uh, the little female is especially friendly. Um, she was bottle raised. Her mother wasn't the best first time parent and kind of over groomed her and licked her tail off. So she was removed and bottle fed. Uh, they're excited because it's breakfast. I can open this up and there's... <clears throat> oh wow, yeah, you can see them eating over there. What are you feeding them? Chicken hearts, uh, frozen young mice, some shrimp. So some like natural foods. Natural foods, try and do as much whole foods as possible. Um, you can actually go in and see if she wants to be friendly. Hello, you can eat your chicken hearts. He's, he's less friendly. Okay. <clears throat> but he might just go hide or he might come out and say hi. Yeah. What's up buddy? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. <clears throat> Hi. <laughs> so they, they like to, or at least she likes to climb on you? She, yeah, this is kind of her preferred location. Sitting, I don't have enough hair, but if someone has a lot of hair, you have a ponytail, she'll probably attack your ponytail if she's on your head. Hi. But I'm kind of her person. Yeah, he's definitely shy. You gonna eat? Here, Yeah, she's, she's just like too interested in people. I can open this so they can kind of go through. That's really cool. He's that friendly. A pretty big area. The, the main cage is eight by 16. And then we added kind of tunnels and additional space for them. Yeah, just I like really that they wanted can... to make them feel like they could explore and have different options, different feel, different vibes in each room. Yeah, I like that they can like hide in these little steps and stuff back Man here cave. too. Yeah, and then all the little corrugated plastic and all that. That's really awesome. But people ask if she goes in the house or, you know, is she a real pet? She, she's not a pet. She's a wild animal. Right. Um, she does happen to like me. Uh, there are about 90 to 100 in the U.S. So when people have like a Bengal cat, are they trying to emulate something like this? Something a little exotic that's part, um, part, you know, regular house cat crossed with, I don't know what Bengals are crossed with. Serval and house cats are savanna cats. And Bengals, Asian leopard, I, I don't know what they are, but I'm risking my life for you. Just kidding. <laughs> When, when you see like, like especially like the way he looks at you, you see like there's like oh, a yeah. wildness <laughs> to the eyes and the way they look. All right, she wants to eat. That's, That's so dude. cool. That. There's hammocks over here. So they really have a lot of options. They don't spend that much time on the ground. Um, so there's lots of different layers and angles to really hang out on. It's awesome. And it's cool that you were able to like make all of this yourself in your backyard. Yeah, we devoted a good chunk of space to these guys, the skunks, the maras. A lot of people want these to be house pets and they really aren't. Uh, this is an older female skunk that was employed at SeaWorld. They're descented. Uh, Florida law makes you, um, you know, remove the scent glands. Uh, and she was gainfully employed at SeaWorld until Corona. And uh, there's another one in there. Apparently they do tricks. I have no idea what the tricks are. They don't really need to do tricks here. They just need to hang out and be kind of ambassadors. Now you said there's how many in here? Two? There's three. Three? Okay, uh, so three, okay. I'm gonna put the food up here so they can 
that will get the fat one out. <coughs> Grab the food. And he, that one will take this from your hands. And wraps and different different layers and try to recreate what I think they would like in the wild. Yeah, kind of it's getting special. under something big and broad. They like lots of vegetables. Um, Missouri makes an omnivore diet. Um, but I stick with some really like grain free, high uh, quality cat food, um, <clears throat> some meats, and lots of fresh vegetables, fruits. Here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Processed food. Everybody's <laughs> favorite. Exactly. <laughs> now you're snubbing the good stuff and going for the kibble. Most of your stuff, you're mixing in a lot of natural foods for, yeah. for pretty much everything. It is, uh, I'll even use the natural food for the turtles and tortoises to hide, or, or use the prepared stuff to hide natural foods. I'm touching a skunk. Do you ever like have issues with them as far as like one wanting to be dominant or anything like that? Or I was worried squabbles? when the two females joined him but I changed everything up too. I put him in a kennel for six or eight hours and revamped everything and changed all the substrate and introduced them all together so they kind of all explored it again. Let's uh, check out the next thing. Cool. At least they know how to do the freaking tour with the food. These are Patagonian Maras or Patagonian Cavies or Cavies. Okay. They're the third largest rodent and they're actually related to guinea pigs. The capybara is the largest, then the porcupine, and then these guys. And these guys are not endangered, uh, but they're really an interesting looking animal and people keep them as pets. And again, people try and keep them in the house. And uh, the, this is how I think they should live. Right. You know, they're definite pets, um, but they live in a natural environment and they you know, live out, and I don't expect that much of them. They don't go for walks or wear leashes or anything like that, and they're pretty personable. They live with a couple of rabbits. The rabbit was uh, purchased as bait for a bobcat and lived in a trap, uh, and we ended up rescuing it. They caught the bobcat and didn't really know what to do with the bunnies, so. We borrowed the trap to catch some foxes to relocate, and the bunnies came with it. So the, the, the long legs that they have, I mean, they almost look like a little deer or something. I mean, is that a, an advantage to where they live? I think it is. They, they can run really, really fast. They live in a burrow. They do a family, um, like a family mm -hmm. colony. Um, and the babies live in the burrow until they're quite old, and then they're pretty much just weaned. Okay. Um, they're big burrowers. This, you can see there, this is right. totally um, protected. They can't dig out. Nothing can dig in. You know, it's, it's like fenced from the top, you know, just all the way down to the bottom. It's, it's really it's, cool the way it's you It's overbuilt. It. Even the safety door um, I like because nothing can escape. I wish the skunks had a safety door. Right. Um, you just don't see a lot of them. The, zoos will have them, but you can't go in and touch them and right. experience them and kind of let them come check you out. And I really want people to interact with them. Yeah. That's awesome. Let's see some turtles and tortoises. Skunks chilling. I know. <laughs> Skunks are always chilling. So these are uh, Brazilian cherry heads, red foot cousins. I think they're a lot more interesting. I like that the head color matches the legs because I'm a freak. I think these guys are really, really cool. I yeah. also like that everyone is different. Spider web. No two are the same. Right, yeah. And that's a really big female. I kind of don't know if she's trying to nest or digging or just chilling out. There's a male. She's unusually large. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, that's a... I mean, that's my hand right there, and that's a big... 14 inches, maybe? Yeah, big cherry head. That's mm. definitely the biggest one I've ever seen. 
This is a really cool looking male. Definite male, concave, long tail. Um, pretty personable. When he's out, you can scratch his butt and he kind of wiggles. Or I'll hit him with the hose and he'll yeah. <laughs> wiggle into it. Yeah, he's really personable. I watch my uh, toes with him. Okay. And he's he. Those two are well raised, really smooth, mm -hmm. uh, no real issues. We have uh, brought up some fruit, <coughs> mango, blueberries, kind of just for interest today. Right. This is Martha. <coughs> she was found by a lady named Martha <coughs> on the side of the road. Wow. One of the <coughs> benefits of South Florida is. You, I guess, can just find cherry heads. Find your cherry head <laughs> running down the sidewalk. Uh, people assume tortoise is a turtle, and you see people releasing sulcatas into the pond and canal. And you know, clearly, she's a land tortoise, and yeah, one that's experienced some really bad care. Um, <clears throat> when I was a kid, there was a funny car called a gremlin, and she kind of looks like a gremlin just, you know, retiring, like the skunks, just kind of hanging out. Yeah, I mean, that is, well, however it started, that is some, like, bizarre shell growth. Yeah. I watched this area here where water can kind of collect and yeah. make sure nothing too funky starts to grow. Uh, this is a captive-raised female who, pretty good, a little bumpy. Yeah. Um, but he's he's quite smooth. Um, but she's she's quite beautiful, I think. Right. And they, and they do good in like this like colony setup where you have you know kind of a mix. Yeah, there's three females and the one male. Um, he has gone in some timeouts when he gets too uh, boisterous in late right. summer. Um, but yeah, they seem to all get along. So we got some yearlings in this. Yeah, this is just a waterland tub that I uh, predator proofed. Beautiful. She's really. That thing is just out of the world, out of this world. High marble, lots of great color. Hoping female. It doesn't really matter, male or female. It doesn't. But pretty decent growth. Stays now, a little too wet out here, so I watch. Right. What's the much. what's the trick to, to raising them? I mean, for you, as as far as like keeping them smooth, I I think South Florida really helps, and the humid really helps. Um, I try and give them pretty wet foods. If I do use Missouri, it's always soaked. Some people feed it dry and crunchy. I like it really soaked. Okay. Um, natural foods: a lot of cactus, mulberry leaves, cranberry hibiscus, um, some grocery store greens, but I mix some dehydrated uh, dandelion or plantain. Something in with it that's rehydrated. Right. Look at that. That's so cool. I don't share a lot of this stuff on social media. To a degree I do, but you yeah. know, people just blow you up and they just want to buy, buy, buy. And yeah, I just... You want to be able to just enjoy your animals. Yeah, I want to share it and say, this is really cool looking, I'm proud you know, of the way they're coming along, not... Yeah, exactly. I'm not, I'm not putting them out there to sell them. Yeah, these yeah. three are the same age. Um, <clears throat> this one I've kept a little bit separate often, just to give them a head start. Her, right. Um, the color's a little bit weird. The skin's more translucent, more gray. Uh, you can't, I don't know if you can pick it up, but it's almost slate color rather than black. Yeah. But they, you know, you always worry about bullying, but when I feed them, I put lots of options. I'll put five options out here for space. Um, and then when they go in the hide, they're all on top of each other. Yeah, they're awesome. And I just try and always rotate what they eat. And at this age, you know, free choice, there's always some yeah. lettuce or piece of cactus hanging out that they, they're, they're never hungry. We found the one yesterday. Oh, here's the... That one, one has here. a split. Pretty little cherry head. Young, youngin'.
So what tub is this? Like where do you get this at? Waterland tub. This is the land version. Okay. The water, it's medium. There's a little bump in it where this would be land area, that would be water or vice versa. Okay. Uh, but it's got holes drilled in the bottom. And I, I just like that it's predator proof. Deep enough that they can bury themselves. Uh, stays pretty stable. You know, everything has a hide. I like I like Cypress. I change it every so often. It, it tells you when it needs to be changed. When right. It gets really funky and breaks down. Um, but I like this. It's it. South Florida has Cypress everywhere. You have a setup over here for the young ones. You have this one right here in a separate setup, and then two more, two more yeah, additional he's setups. He's a juvenile male. Okay. Uh, and he was in kind of a hard quarantine, and now he's kind of still in quarantine. He'll stay by himself till he's older, um, but definitely separate. Okay. And then another guy here. Oh wow. I love this, the simple but useful hides too. Just nail some boards together and they can get underneath it and they're happy. Yeah, they're it, it, I try and give them options. You know, this one faces this way, that one faces that way. They'll go in different ones. When this hibiscus bush finally decides to live, that will offer other options too and a food source. They love hibiscus flowers. I mean, he's really, that, I'm excited about these two males. You should try one of those leaves. I can't tell, I mean, I'm. <laughs> So this is edible for, for anybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is human food. True story. I'm, I'm not going to poison you. It's not bad. It's like citrusy. citrusy. Yeah. It's cranberry hibiscus. A little sour. <clears throat> Look at that color. The two marbling ones are in here. Dude. Nope. I don't know where they are. Maybe Man, there. that is... It's like It's just like it's been painted on. You know, you, you can be proud of ones that you grow really smooth and yeah, uh, slow and smooth. A lot of people get crazy about growing them really, really fast and bumping them up. But, um, you know, I'm not really in a hurry. They can just do what they want. Right, yeah, I, I don't believe in raising tor turtles or tortoises fast because they don't naturally grow fast. So there's not really no. a, a point to that other than doing it for yourself, which is kind of weird. Oh man, there we are. <laughs> that is beautiful. Male. Yeah, he's got the concave plaster on. 